Okay, our goal today is to create a short animation using Adobe After Effects. And as we learn a little bit about how After Effects works and creating an animation, we'll also get some ideas around how we can organize our After Effects projects that make uh, work efficient and make it easier to work with, work with After Effects projects, especially when they start to get uh, large and very complex. So I've started Adobe After Effects. I've got an option as I start to either create a new project, bring in some old ones that I've been working on, a number of different things. But I'm just going to click the new project uh, button and After Effects starts up and gives me kind of a blank uh, screen here with a number of work areas. Let's call this the workspace. Uh, I like to get in a good habit of kind of resetting my workspace, uh, which I do um, to a number of different Adobe products. Um, but if I go to Window, Workspace, and it's set for the default, that's great. And I'm just going to um, keep the default set up there. Okay, you can create custom workspaces. But I'll take the default so we're all on the same page. And I've got a number of areas on my screen that are allocated for different parts of my project. To the left is where I will work with all my assets. To the center is what I will see in the compositions. Okay, to the right are some tools uh, that I can use. Notice we've got uh, different uh, options here for tools as I start to work with my assets. And to the bottom is our timeline. And our timeline is uh, what we want to happen over different times and we will work with the timeline and uh, the assets within the timeline which will show up on the bottom left. There's nothing there because I have no assets or composition started. So one of the first things we want to do is bring some assets in to work with. And if I look at the project window to the left, now let's say I want to file, import. So I want to bring some assets in. I'm going to import a file. And I'm going to navigate to the file I want. In this case, there's a basketball here I want to start working with. And let me click on basketball. Let me do import. And notice After Effects brings that, that one single graphic in. And now I have file imported, ready to start animating. Well, I'm going to need a lot more files, so let's bring in the rest here. Let's say file, import. And I'm going to just get the rest of these assets I have all set for my projects. I'm going to click that first WAV file, hold the shift key, click uh, the wastebasket there, and bring all of these in. And notice it brought all these different uh, Files in, I've actually got two basketballs there, so I'm going to click one and, and a little trash can there and delete it. And so I have all these assets, and it can get pretty big if I'm bringing in tons of files. And notice I'm going to just drag here and create a little bit bigger view so I can see um, what these things are, with a little more information about them. But notice I've got audio files, video files, and graphics. After Effects will allow me to create folders within my project to kind of better organize things. And I'd like to do that to kind of reduce clutter. You'll notice one option here is a folder, create a new folder, that little button there. I'm going to click it and I get a blank uh, empty folder and I'm going to name this audio. And I'm going to click the audio files that I have. There's, there's three of them here at the top. Click and hold, drag those over, and just drag them and drop them in the audio folder. I've got a few more here, so let's click that one, and then hold the shift, and click that one, bring those that audio file in there. Okay, and there's one more here. Click and drag. And now I've got all my audio folder files in its own folder, and I can toggle the view of that folder. That's nice. I have a little less clutter. Let's create another folder call that movies and I'll put all my movie assets which I have a number brought into the project and drag those and drop them in the movie folder and do that one more time for these uh, ping files I have or graphic files I'm going to create another folder and call this graphics I, sometimes people will label this kind of folder pictures it doesn't matter whatever name makes sense to you I like to use graphics especially if I'm going to import Illustrator or Photoshop files uh, as well. But I'm going to click on those assets and drag them into graphics. Do that again. 
And now my workspace is really nice. I've got three folders here that I can kind of toggle back and forth and things are organized by file type. Whatever makes sense to you in terms of your folder structures, it's up to you, but that's the nice part. You can create it however you want. So I'm almost ready to animate here. Just got to get a, a new, start a new composition. I have gotten in the habit of creating one more folder and I call it comps. And I'm going to do that or compositions. And this is um, where I will put all the compositions. I'm working on After Effects project, which could have multiple compositions. And so I'll have another folder for those. Today we're just going to have a single comp, but it doesn't hurt to have the folder in there and it stays consistent. I'm going to save my project, file, save as, and I'm going to call this After Effects project um, an AE demo. Okay, and click save. So I've saved the After Effects project file, I've got assets imported, and I'm ready to create my first animation. I showed you how I can kind of adjust these windows. Um, but let's create a new animation and let's call, uh, we need to start with a composition. Tell After Effects we want to create a new composition and animate. So I'm going to click on composition, take the new option, and I have a number of parameters there, one of which, what's the name of this? And this I'm going to call the bouncing ball animation. Okay, and uh, lots of different options, but notice we have a custom preset, which is set to 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's fine. That's like a widescreen video. I'm going to just stay with that. I could adjust it. Lots of different parameters, but I'm going to go down here to duration and make sure it's set for 10 seconds. I want a 10 second animation, which is set there, but I could just type in there as well. Okay. And the background color is white. Okay, and that was the other piece there. I clicked OK. And notice now I have a comp ready. My view is at 50% here in my comp window. Let's get that fitted up to 100% so we can see things a little better. And notice I have a new composition, which are uh, 12 um, frames per second rate by default there, and then um, a new comp. So I'm going to just click and move that composition into my compositions folder, just so I'm consistent with the rest. So I've organized all of my assets and my comps. And I am ready to animate. I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to just kind of drag the bar and just give myself uh, some real estate here, because I'm going to work with these things a little bit, so I give some room there. And in the bottom, I have a timeline that's ready to go. And notice the timeline, because I said 10 seconds, now has some timing indicators from left to right, from zero to right there is five seconds on that ruler. All the way to the end of my comp is 10 seconds, because I told After Effects I want a 10 second composition. And I have this time vertical time bar, which I'm clicking and dragging. And I can move wherever I want within the 10 seconds and do different things. Well, it's not, we're not seeing anything because that there's nothing I've done. So I'm going to just bring the time bar over to the left at zero. And notice, look, there's the timer there. I could set things that way. If I click on that and just type um, five seconds, it, notice it moved the time bar to five seconds. Your preference. You can... Um, Click specific time there. You can kind of drag and drop your vertical bar. I'm just going to bring that back to zero. And I'm going to start animating. Let's bring in our first piece here. And let's bring in a basketball and try to animate that ball. So I'll go to my graphics folder, open it up. And there was the basketball. If I click on it, notice there's that graphic. I want that. I'm going to simply just drag it on my screen and right in the middle. And bingo. I now have a basketball in my composition. It's on the timeline uh, at the, currently at zero. And notice I have this asset here that I can animate that ball. So uh, at zero, when we first start animation, I really want this to come in um, off the screen from the top here. So notice I'm going to move it off the screen at the top and just put it there slightly to the left and let go. And that's where uh, After Effects um, says, okay, you want your ball there. And then at the end of my animation, I want, I'm going to drag the timer and bring it all the way over to 10 seconds. And at the end, I want the ball, to, and I'm click and hold, and I'm just going to drag it across and put the ball to the right off screen. 
I want the ball to move from left to right off screen over the course of 10 seconds. So that's all set to go, right? Let's see what happens if I um, drag, when I drag my timer, nothing seems to happen. Why is that? That's because of the way I uh, haven't told After Effects what to do. I've just told After Effects where I want this ball, and when I moved it across screen, After Effects said, oh, you want the ball over there rather than um, at the left. Well, I do, but I don't want that until 10 seconds. So if I um, want to have After Effects move it, I have to set a keyframe. So I'll move my timeline back to zero, and I'm going to move my ball back to the left, and I'm going to set this keyframe. And the keyframe basically it tells After Effects at this moment in time, this attribute, which is position, I want it to be there. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to make sure basketball is highlighted. And there's a little chevron here. If I just click that, notice I've got, it says transform. And that's where I can change different things. And when I click the chevron down one more time on transform, notice all these different things I can animate. Anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. Well, I want to change position. So at the very beginning at zero, my ball is in the left. I want the position to be right there. So if you notice right now, if I look at the position parameters, it's at minus 124x and 114y for its x and y coordinates on, on this animation. I'm going to just click that little stopwatch. And After Effects puts a little diamond there at zero, zero, which is the call to keyframe. And it's set. Now it knows at, at this moment in time, I want the ball to be in this exact position. You drag it now across, let's drag my timer over to 10 seconds. At the end of my animation at 10 seconds. And now I'm gonna drag the ball and just put it all the way over here to the right of my animation. And notice After Effects puts a new diamond at 10 seconds. And notice the position is 2041x, 112y. Okay, and I've got two keyframes. Now when I drag my timer, and notice there's this little dotted line across the top, kind of like a trail. And that is the uh, animation path that's now created because I set those keyframes. But look when I drag backwards to zero. So if I go from, and then just back and forth, now it looks like my ball is going to move across the screen. Okay. Let's see what happens when we try to preview that. I was just kind of scrubbing or dragging that timeline to see, but I move it back to zero. And one of the windows here on the, uh, the right side here is preview. I'm gonna click on that and it, the drop down gives me a number of preview options. Uh, one of which is the player here. And let me just click on the player. I could also hit the space bar, but I'm just gonna click on the player. And notice now After Effects is kind of rendering this project and giving me a preview of what it will look like over 10 seconds. There goes the ball from left to right. After Effects will just keep playing that preview until I hit stop. There I have it. I have a ball moving across my screen over the course of 10 seconds. I'm just going to click stop there. And notice the timeline just stops wherever I'm at. But I'm just going to drag it back to zero. And I have this animation. I could export this out and we're all set. But that doesn't look realistic now, does it? And, um, and it's a little bit slow. Well, that's okay. Uh, a couple things. What I'd like to really do is make this ball look like it came off screen and bounce and then, and then leave. Okay? Plus, it's not even moving at all. It's just like, it's just roll. it doesn't look like it's rolling, does it? Because it's not rotating. So I'm going to go back to zero. And using that keyframe concept, remember another option here is to animate another parameter called rotation. And notice that... At zero, zero, it doesn't rotate at all. There's no zero X and plus zero, which is zero X is revolutions and the plus is degrees. So right now it's set to no um, rotation. So I'll click on that stopwatch like I did for position when I'm at zero on the timeline. I've set an initial rotation for uh, the ball at zero. I'm gonna move over to my final keyframe over there at the end, 10 seconds, and click on this time that first X there and say three. So I want three revolutions of this ball over 10 seconds. 
So I press enter. Now that says 3x. Now I'm going to go back to my beginning of my timeline by just clicking there this time and just pressing clicking zero. It moves my timer all the way back to the beginning. And now when I drag, now notice, look, that ball is rolling, appears to be rolling across the screen. Hey, that looks a lot better. Let's try the preview again. There we have it. Now we have the ball apparently rolling across the screen over the course of 10 seconds. So I want to make one other modification. That, that looks pretty good, actually. But what I want to do is have this ball, instead of being roll across the top of my screen, have it appear that it's bouncing in the screen and bouncing off the screen. So I'll stop. And um, right now, I'm going to just move my timer. And really what I want is to have that ball bounce about halfway through the animation. So I'm going to go to halfway through my animation, just dragging my vertical bar. Five seconds there. When it's at this point, I want the ball to be not at the top of my screen, but come in at the bottom like it just bounced in. So I'm at five seconds, and because I set these keyframes, now when I make any adjustment, After Effects will automatically add the other appropriate keyframes for me. Okay, So I'm going to click and hold the ball, which then essentially, notice, gives me position. And I'm just going to drag it down and right about there, set it on the bottom of my screen to make it, and we see the little curve that comes in. Now uh, After Effects has set a keyframe at five seconds for position, not rotation, just position, because I was uh, working on that parameter. Now, notice now when I drag my piece, now it looks like the ball's coming off screen, rolling, hitting the bottom, and bouncing up off screen. Wow, that's looking a lot better. Let's try that one more time on the preview. Here comes the ball. Bounce, and then off screen. Looks good, huh? I could export that out to a movie, okay? Let's just look at one other thing, though. I'm going to click Stop, and notice I see the path in After Effects, and I see these little handles off of these keyframes, okay? Lots of little dots. I can subtly adjust this uh, different pieces. So um, I'll just drag this bar here and see what happens to my path. Notice I can adjust my path. Uh, quite a bit here by just kind of just dragging in and out, up and down. I can do lots of different things. Um, I'm going to just tighten that up a little bit on both sides. Have the ball come in a from a little higher angle here on the left. Notice I'm just doing that. And then on the way out, a little bit, um, little bit more direct like that. Now my path looks a little different. And uh, let's see how that looks when I click Preview. Just got to finish out where it was. And here we go. One more time. Here comes the ball. A little kind of big bounce in. Off the screen. And there you have it. Looks pretty good. I want to do one last adjustment. And that is, in, in the real world here, when I'm about five seconds, a ball actually would kind of, when it hits right here, wouldn't it kind of squish a little bit and then, because it, it had impact and force on the ground? So maybe right there, what I want to do is just have that ball squish a little bit to make it look a little more realistic, okay? And how do I do that? Well, using the keyframe option, another thing I can animate is scale. But notice it hasn't been animated at all because there's no keyframes. So I'm gonna go back to the very beginning I'm going to set an initial keyframe for scale, which is 100%. I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to go over to the end of my animation and say when it finishes, I still want it to be 100%. So uh, there's no keyframe set there. So if I click on the stopwatch, it will turn scale off. I'm going to click on this bar this time to add, add the keyframe there on this little diamond. So now I have two keyframes for scale, one at 100% at the end, one at 100% at the beginning. But what I want is that little squish halfway through. So I'm going to go to the five seconds. There's no keyframe set for scale, but I'm going to set one. So again, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, click on that triangle to the, or that diamond to the left to set it. Notice After Effects put the diamond there, but I want to modify this. I want to kind of squish it. 
So now if I'm holding on scale and if I drag one of these ends, say that part, notice how uh, it's squishing the ball, okay, a little bit. Okay, and then it's going to, so from being 100 by 100, now it's 100 wide by 83 high, so I've squished it a little. And at the end, it's 100 by 100, so it'll kind of regain its shape again. So let's see what happens now when I've had that subtle squish in the middle and bringing it going from 100% on scale. Click the preview, here comes the ball in. It's losing shape a little bit already. It looks like an egg, boom, it hits. Looked like a football and then off. Well, that needs some, some quite a bit of adjusting. So let's just do one last subtle adjustment there. I really want that 100%, just I only want the squish right at the five seconds, right? So I'm gonna click stop and I'm going to go over to just before, there's the five seconds, but just before, it hits, let's say right here, I really still want it to be 100. So I'm gonna click that 100 time frame at the very beginning, just bring it, drag it all the way over to right before, notice the ball's getting big, okay? And what that tells After Effects is I still want it to be 100% from the very beginning all the way to right here and only go to the squish right at that impact then go a few frames off after, about the same there, and I want it 100% there after it hits again, okay? Or maybe even a little bit more. Right there, I want it to be 100%. So I'm going to grab that last keyframe on scale and just drag that back over all the way there, drag it and let go. So the ball's 100% by the time it gets there. Let's click, uh, let's bring our time frame back and let's click preview and see if that looks a little better. Here comes our ball, looks, looks good proportion. It hits the ground. Oh, there's our little squish from impact and then it gets its shape again and goes off screen. Looking good. We've got our first animation. Let's create a movie file out of it. I'm gonna hit stop, just bring my stuff all back. I'm gonna be wise here and save my project. Now I'm going to export it. File, export, and go to the Adobe Media Encoder and create a new folder, a new project a movie file out of it. The, and there it is. It's got the bouncing ball composition set to go. It's got an H.264 format, which is good for the web, which we want to do. And then it's going to this folder and it's where I'm working on it. So that's fine, that folder's fine, but I could change it and the name is gonna be called Bouncing Ball. And I'm gonna click the green arrow to start my encoding. So we'll take a second, you'll see a preview here at the bottom in a minute. There's my animation going. It looks like it's all done, there's the green check mark. I'm gonna close out the encoder and I'm going to bring up and take a look and see what that um, what that movie file I created looks like. There's the demo, there's the bouncing ball. Video, MP4, here comes my ball off screen, looks good, hits. Oh, there's that little squish. And off screen. Fantastic, we've just created our first animation using Adobe After Effects. We also learned how to create and organize our After Effects folders and assets a little better, and you're well on your way to getting started using Adobe After Effects.